We're going to discuss something which uh, I think is a very, very important story for all New Zealanders. And in a strange way, it is a story which embodies the very reason the platform was created and the reason that, and I'll give myself a pat on the back, we've done so well. It is a story about corruption. And it's a story about the gentle cronyism and corruption that can happen in a country the size of New Zealand. Just five and a half million people, we all know each other, and uh, we are relatively a calm, peaceful and prosperous country. But like any functional democracy, you need a few things uh, for th everything to work out all right. You need to have equality before the law. You need to have a law and a system of justice that works. You need people to have democracy, to have a say in the society that they live by voting. And you need to make the franchise for voting as broad as, as possible, within reason. And for all that to work, you need to have what's called a fourth estate, a news media. A news media who support the pillars of the society by encouraging democracy and reporting fairly and freely and without favour. Increasingly, though, it seems we do not have that in New Zealand. And I'm just going to start the segment by playing you uh, a recording from a podcast, which, of course, is the trendy new word for well-opinion piece or people yakking or doing some talk radio like we do or talk netcasting like we do. And the person you're going to hear from is Mark Jennings. He's been a senior news executive for 20 or 30 years. I've known him all that time, and here he is talking on a podcast. It's a podcast produced by a woman called Alexia Russell, who's a journalist at Radio New Zealand. Um, she is producer of this program called The Detail. Mr Jennings is the founding, one of the founding editors of a media company been around a while now called Newsroom. Newsroom has received more than $2 million in government funding to subsidise its otherwise unprofitable uh, operations. And it has, and it's the details of which are not sure, it has a sponsorship agreement, uh, it appears to me, with universities around the country that allows it, or I think requires it, to publish generally left-wing columns um, from various academics up and down the country. So, Mr Jennings, and funnily enough, the detail is actually produced, or Alexia might work for Newsroom, the detail is produced for Radio New Zealand by the private company Newsroom, so for the state broadcaster, by the uh, private company Newsroom. At the moment, it is funded by Creative New Zealand, which means you. Right? So they just get funding to make this podcast. And don't forget, Radio New Zealand, who broadcasts the podcast that Newsroom makes, they get more than $30 million, I think it is now a year, from you. Uh, to get the money that he gets, and for the detail get to get the money that it gets, it has to agree to ascribe to certain views on the Treaty of Waitangi and diversity and other things and it signs a contract to take the money to do that. Um, so that's the context in which they make their, and I'll use the word loosely, journalism. So Friday of last week, uh, the latest episode of The Detail, made with your money by people who have signed a deal to say these are the things we will and won't cover, took issue um, with... The detail took issue with Mr Peters saying there is bribery and corruption in the news media. Um, and the detail got two people on. Peter Thompson, a lefty lecturer in media studies from Victoria University, strangely enough, who obviously have a relationship with Newsroom. Uh, Peter Dunn, who's just kind of ex-politician for hire in Wellington. Um, uh, you know, he'd turn up for the opening of a phone booth, Peter Dunn, and have a comment on it. And Mark Jennings himself, former editor of TV3 News um, and now co-editor, founder of Newsroom. Uh, and they were discussing what they said. The, the headline for this segment was Democracy in Danger When Lies Go Unchecked. 
And I'll read the subheading, calling out disinformation is becoming increasingly difficult as it reverberates on social media. That's enough of a problem, but when faulty public perceptions are used to formulate government uh, policy, democracy is in trouble. Um, And all that is kind of expected from the pearl-clutching, self-interested legacy media, in which I include Newsroom. But here was the thing that Mark Jennings said that literally sent chills down my spine. There has been quite a lot of talk and discussion in the media, particularly amongst senior editorial people, about whether we should even report Winston Peters' attacks on the media when he says there's corruption and clearly there's no basis for that, whether we should all just stick together and decide not to report him. What do you think of that idea? (laughs) (laughs) All right. Um, Wow. That is gaslight. That is next level gaslighting, Mr Jennings. You are telling me that Mr Peters is wrong and you're telling me, by the way, on a program that is funded with public money that was given in return for editorial consideration... You're telling me that Mr Peters is wrong when he says there's bribery and corruption, yet in the very same breath, in the very same breath you say editors from news organisations, different news organisations have got together and tried or considered literally cancelling the leader, the Deputy Prime Minister of New Zealand, deplatforming him because you don't agree with what he's saying. You have proved Mr Peter's point with words out of your own mouth. We are going to have Winston Peters on tomorrow morning to talk about this, but I'm sure it is not lost on you how dangerous things have become in a country when senior editorial staff even consider or think it is any way appropriate, in any way appropriate, to have a discussion about cancelling and deplatforming a political party simply because it's saying nasty things or true things or disturbing things about them. Uh, I've worked with Mark Jennings uh, a lot of times. In fact, my best day at work was with Mark Jennings uh, way back in 1991. But... um, Of course, what journalism is about is accountability. That's why we have a fourth estate. I thought Mr Jennings, having made such a bombshell revelation, such a bombshell revelation, would at least have the decency and understand the importance of fronting to tell us who else is involved in this. Is it the editors of Radio New Zealand? I'm going to presume yes. Phil O'Sullivan from TVNZ, I'm going to presume yes. Sinead Boucher or editorial staff from stuff, I'm not sure. The spin-off, almost certainly. So who took part in these discussions about suppressing free speech, about collusion and running a cartel operation in news coverage in New Zealand? I think there needs to be an inquiry, a formal inquiry into this. It is so disturbing and so damaging for our democracy. I want to invite this morning senior editorial leaders from all our legacy media to publicly state whether or not they were involved in these discussions. And I'd like to invite, and we have invited Mark Jennings onto this program to tell us who they were and explain himself. Um, That task fell to Ben, who got on the blower yesterday. Now, Ben, um, you did get hold of Mark Jennings. He returned your call, or did he text back, or did you have a phone conversation? We had a text conversation. Yeah, see, didn't, I, didn't I see, couldn't even pick up the phone. He couldn't quite even pick phone. up the phone. Absolutely remarkable. And what did he say? Ben? Well, he didn't pick up the phone, but he did answer some questions. Um, so I asked first and foremost to confirm whether the uh, confirm that the quote was legitimate because I hadn't heard this podcast um, up until yesterday. Uh, He confirmed that it was and said that he was using the word discussions as in people talking about the idea informally uh, and that he didn't think anybody had any serious plans to actually do anything. Uh, That media people talk a lot 
and that, uh, as he said, there were no there were no plans to actually do any of that. So basically, it's kind of just this idea of oh, it's just oh, kind so of sitting around it, over a I cup say of tea it in public in a public forum in a news supposedly information program. But then I walk it back, right? Yeah, so yeah. it's 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 yeah, it's that thing of oh, we're just kind of sitting around the cafeteria talking about it. It's not serious, um, but basically, yeah, that that sort of whole podcast was go was Mark going around interviewing a bunch of other journalists and media academics. About how awful it have people saying things about the media, and they were scratching their heads about why public trust in the media seems to be plummeting. Forty percent last uh, uh, and they distrust mainstream media and trust it. Absolutely, they discussed that poll, and yeah, and so I think the answer might really be in, in that little quote there at the end. Um, collectively, trying to decide with other media, sort of uh, with other editorial people, what information New Zealanders will get access to based on what they think of it. Uh, might be the answer to that question. Um, but yeah, so he won't come on the program at the moment. I did also ask Mark what other media outlets were involved in those discussions, whether informal or otherwise. Didn't, uh, didn't give me any names there, so we don't actually know who they were. Um, but I, it would be worth trying to get more of them on, I think. It would be worth trying to keep that conversation Well, they going. don't really engage because we... You can guess. We're you can kind, kind of cancelled. Well, you know, we're kind of cancelled. Platform is kind of cancelled. They've done that to us collectively pretty well. Um, geez, I'd like them to grow up here. 